and welcome to another edition of The Other People Show. Friday, November 10th, 2023, a little bit before 11 p.m. tonight. Sorry about that. Real talk ran a little short, and I'm a little tired. But nonetheless, we're going to have a great show, as we always do. Cold and chilly tonight, huh? But it's not as cold as it probably will be a little later on, so I'm grateful that it's the temperature that it is. You know where you're listening on 92.5 WLSD or 12:20 a.m. You can go to wlsdradio.com, check out the shows, the songs, everything there's going on on those places. You can also check out our social media pages at YouTube, Spotify, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Type in the other people's show. It will pop up. And there are thousands of videos. There's a lot of standalone sketches. A couple of series. Amos Williams, The Adventure Begins. Trick. Carnival. Season 1 and 2. And a couple of single standalone sketches. That's what you get. Happy birthday. Happy boyth day. And some other things like that. How's it been going? Good week? Bad week? I would have to say this, this past week is probably the best week that I've had in a long, long time. And I attribute that to being healthy mentally, distancing myself from anything toxic, coming up with ideas for this fantastic show, and a lot of it is still getting moved into my apartment. Now, those of you that have moved often or are moving it can be uh, overwhelming, exhilarating, anxiety-ridden, stressful. All these things are true. And the biggest problem or the biggest hassle, I would think, is getting everything you need or want in. Now, you might already have things coming from one place or the other. I only had a few things. I'm very minimalistic. I... I've, I've not yet put an anchor down anywhere. So therefore, I've not bought anything that is going to be difficult to move out. It needs to be moved out as quickly as it was moved in. Oh, the cops are here? Alright, we're gone. Just kidding. That's not why. That's not why at all. Um, I don't know where I'm going to reside for the rest of my life. So therefore, I can't put roots down completely... When I don't know. But it is a good experience because I'm making it into a studio, a livable, a livable apartment. It's got three, but you could, technically it only has three rooms. Bedroom, bathroom, and a, like a kitchen and a living, living room kind of combined. But in essence, there's four rooms because there's a clear divide. And it's slowly coming together. After rewatching and reviewing the Salt and Sea last week, I put another order into Amazon. The poster should be arriving, so that'll be on a reel for a couple hundred people to watch. It is crazy what seems to take off sometimes on some of the social media pages. I know on TikTok I have quite a few... Uh, the Dark Place killers up there. And for some reason, those garner a couple of thousand um, views on there. But it's only the picture. It's it's the same, almost the same exact thing that I post on the Facebook page. When, in, in all honesty, it is the same. You go on the other people's show, or Ryan Parker, 
or Adam Chafin's Facebook page, the other people's show, you will see that exact thing that's on the other people's show TikTok. And, you know, it gets a couple hundred views on, on the Facebook pages and such. But on TikTok, it, it's averaging over a thousand each one. And I have not been able to understand why why that. So I'm going to actually chop up some of the dark place and make it into like a three or four, three, four to five minute episode and make it a little TikTok show as well. And that also brings me to something that I wanted to talk about, but I'll talk about later in the show. I need to make a note. But I'm looking for someone that is good with with social media. That, that knows the ins and outs, that's good at editing, that can help create. Uh, and I'm looking for someone like that. So I do need someone like that. So if you are someone like that, it's vague, yes. There's some things of brewing, and it's going to be a brewing and getting ready to be prepared to showcase and show everyone in 2024. A revamping of the show, so to speak. Because the show, you know, in all honesty, it's it's taken a little bit of a life on its own. It it kind of dictates what it is going to be as opposed to what I want it to be. The creation has taken control of the creator. Where I'm going to try in 2024 to mold the show back into what I originally wanted and intended for it to be. Not to disparage or uh, discount anything that, that we've done since May. Because that's, you know, uh, it's, it's been great. It's been, it's been a learning and it's, it's been a, you know, a growing experience. And a lot of turmoil has happened behind the scenes. Um, personal turmoil, nothing, nothing to do with the show turmoil. But it's been continuing to do it during those times. And that's kind of like what I was talking about a few weeks ago with you all. When it was like, when those rainstorms come, when the lightning comes, when the tornadoes come in your life, you're going to survive those. You can survive those. And you have to continue going forward and not letting these things bring you down. I didn't want to do a show multiple times. And there's been 25 or 26 shows done during, done during those rough times for me. And I would guarantee you that at least half of those shows... I did not want to do, and it would have been easier not to do them. And I even had told uh, someone, I said, you know, I, I don't enjoy doing the shows anymore. Maybe I'm just going to give up on the shows. But then, you know, a few, a few weeks ago, the, there was an outpouring of people that said, don't, don't stop doing the show. We enjoy the show. We look forward to you doing the show. We look forward to these things that you're putting out there. So after the outreach, kind of retooling some ideas that I was originally going to have uh, put in place, um, looking for maybe a relaunch uh, in the in the new year. Still going to be the other people's show, still going to do Real Talk, still also going to do The Dark Place, but we're going to change up a little bit about the structure of the show, taking some calls having some more guests back in. So doing some things like that, there, there's a, you know, a directing opportunity that's opened up for me, uh, directing a music video that's coming up. So that's, that's a cool thing. Also in, coming up in January, I think January 16th, if I'm not mistaken, a feature that I shot, um, it's an ensemble, but that I happen to be a part of, uh, shot in uh, Florida last summer and uh it's coming out uh i think january 16th on uh one of the streaming services i'm not sure which one yet but i will let everyone know when uh when that happens but not only was i getting an apartment which i've, I've about settled in a few more things there i was also you know i um was in the process of looking for a vehicle, which I do not like to do. I, I do I do not like it. It's stressful to me. I don't enjoy it. And I wish I could just go get it, pay, be done. I, I don't want to wheel and deal. 
I don't have time for it. I don't have time for the sending in the paperwork. I, I, I had to do everything through email and phone call because I did not have time to physically go over, get the loan that I needed, went back. So it had to all be done through uh, email and phone call. And that was that carried on for about six days and was very stressful. It put me in a bad mood. I was in a bad mood, and I was very grouchy and hateful. So I do apologize if I was grouchy and hateful to, to whomever you may be during that. But it's the, um, it's the truth. It's the truth. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and I don't want to be that way during... Um, I don't... <clears throat> got a little choked up there. I don't want to be upset because of getting a car or getting a house or this or that. That's not the kind of person that I want to be. So I needed to be more zen-like, be more balanced, be more focused, put my uh, Reiki meditation to the test. And I have been. And it's really helped. And I do feel more balanced and more in control. So I'm, I'm very grateful to that. Very grateful. And uh, that brings me to my next next thing. And I'm not sure how many people, I think a lot of people do this. I'm not somebody you would probably think that would get involved in, in, in play. But I am involved in, uh, I think this is the third time involved in fantasy football. And my team is doing terrible awful. If, if you watch The Help, my team is the terrible awful. It's horrible. They're two and seven, and I'm last. But the thing is, I check and read, not every single day, but on a regular basis, and try to put in there the people that I think will do the best job due to stats, due to recommendations, what it says, the headlines, and then I try to go in and do the best I can. My team performs worse and worse every week. I mean, worse and worse every week. What can you do? I don't know what you can do. I have no idea because I've went on, I've changed players. I've, uh, I, even last week when I was watching the, uh, who was it? The, uh, the Titans and the, uh, the Steelers, you know, I was sitting there watching it and, uh, It, it, it just, it, it had me on the edge of my seat. I was actually doing exercise during that too. But I had to. I couldn't really sit still. I had to move around. Act like I'm throwing the pass. Act like I'm giving the handoff. Act like I'm catching. Running. I, I just don't know if I can take it. I mean, I'm 2-7. and seven. How many games do we play? 16? Are there 16 games that the fantasy football... I said we... I meant the plural we, not that I think that I'm a player. Although I did play, and I was good. I was a running back. I was fast. Nobody could catch me. Catch me if you can. That's what I said. Catch me if you can, sucker. Eat my dust. <laughs> Eat my Nikes. Eat my rubber soles. One time when I was in third grade, I lived in Washington State on a little island called Oak Harbor in Washington in Puget Sound. It was near Canada. We often played football on the, on the playground. We played soccer there, um, basketball. This was tackle football. Although you, you weren't supposed to, we did. And my best friend, uh, his name was Larry McBride. He was a avid uh, L.A. Raiders fan. They were L.A. Raiders at the time. I was for Cincinnati. But we were playing, and he tried to uh, tackle me. 
and my foot accidentally hit him in the bottom of the chin. And he was really mad and upset about about that for like three or four days. And I was like, Larry, I didn't do it on purpose. I'm running. You're trying to tackle me. You miss me and fall on my feet. And the my shoe happens to catch you in the chin. What am I supposed to do? Sorry, dude. Sorry. I was faster than him. And I was faster than a lot of these, even the Mohicans. But my fantasy football team is not good. And there's no one to blame except me. I mean, I guess I could blame, I could blame, I, I didn't like uh, go to the draft. I let it automatically draft for me. So maybe that's my fault. Because <laughs> if I hadn't have done that, Maybe I could have got a few better players to begin with. I don't know. It didn't start off well. It didn't start off well at all. So I'm hoping that things do get better. But it's, 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 is there any use in it now? It's near the end. I don't think there's any use in for me even trying anymore. There's a, there's a player on there, and then I'll get off of this topic, but there's a player on there who doesn't even change out his players. He doesn't even go on there. He's not been on there. It's just like playing uh, the the players he's had on the entire time. He is like four and four and five. I'm two and seven, and I'm trying. It's just so frustrating. It's so frustrating. So I had uh, getting a new apartment. I got that. Talking about a car. Now I did find a car. I'm not going to say what kind of car it is because I don't want my enemies out there trying to find me. I don't need any car bombs. I don't need any stink bombs. I don't need any, uh, what is it, toothpaste under the, the door, the uh, handlebar or whatever. Is that even a thing anymore? Do people do that? It seems like, like there, there used to be more things that would happen on Halloween. And I'm glad they're not. I'm glad, you know, these things don't happen, or at least not around here. But... It just seems like I used to hear about it more. But maybe where more bad things happen every day, the smaller things like, you know, getting egged or toilet papered or whatever like that is, is not really news anymore. It's more like fun news. Oh, look what happened. Oh, there was an egg yolk on somebody's face. That happens a lot with me. I always have an egg on my face. I always do, and I never know why. I mean, I guess I do know why. And when you realize why, that's half the battle that you've won because then you can change your behavior and not have egg yolk on your face anymore. Because let's just face it, no one really wants egg yolk on their face, do they? I don't think so. On that, on that note, we're going to go and listen to a song by James Bay called Pink Lemonade. Hope you enjoy.
That was James Bay with Pink Lemonade. And you're listening to The Other People Show on 92.5 WLSD, The Vault. I, that song used to play a lot. Um, I used to listen to XM, Sirius XM. And that uh, probably 2018, 2019, maybe even 2017. And that song was a constant... Uh, you know, constantly on the uh, indie pop channel. I, I can't recall what it was called. Alt Nation as well is what uh, what I think it might have been called. I had a chemical pill today. Three of uh, three of three. I had them every th- uh, every three weeks for nine weeks, and the first one uh, did well. The the one last time did well, and I think the one this time is going to do well. But if you see me out, it does look like I have a, a bad sunburn because we're going two layers deep uh, of skin. And what's going on is you're getting these, uh, I guess you could say, the, the chemicals. I don't know exactly what they are. I know the, what they are, but I don't know the name of them right offhand. I didn't really, I just had chemical peel written on the itinerary. So I thought, you know, maybe. But anyway. So you put that in, you, you put that on, you go there, they put it on for you, you don't put it on, and you'll feel like a burn, uh, a burn and an itching that's kind of going around your face. In different places, it might burn more than the others, and this is more of the chemicals actually eating away at damaged skin cells, skin cells that, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe the dark, cir- uh, dark spot skin cells that are sun damaged, or damaged by just being damaged so this uh peel is put on and it it turns red and it flakes off and what's flaking off is those one or two layers depending on you know you can get the the medium is what i got which was two layers so my face will be shedding like a karma chameleon this whole week and what's surprising kind of surprising i had it three weeks ago is when I went into one of my side hustles, uh, one of my co-workers workers looked at me and they were like, did you just come from the gym? You look like you're sweating. Because my face had a, a red glisten to it. A red glow just due to the, the heat that, and chemicals that my face had been uh, subjected to and the shedding of the dead and damaged skin cells. The benefits of that... The skin cells underneath, they come to the forefront, they're brighter, rejuvenated, and are more appealing. So that's just a little tidbit about the chemical peel. But I came in, I think I said last time or a couple shows ago, that my friend Talitha, who's now an aesthetician in around, uh, I don't know if she's in Denver, but she's in Colorado. I think she's near Denver, Colorado. She was the one who originally... I was the model that that went to their class and they kind of did these procedures to Talitha did them to me a lot. So when we were, when we were in the DC area, we uh you know, I was able to get uh professional you know, spa things, you know, the chemical pills or the facials or whatever it would be, but just at the employee price. I was on her friends and family list. So that was really nice. And when I go back and look at pictures of my skin, I can tell. I'm like, wow. Wow, what, wouldn't it be great to be 27 again? That I, I mean, do you have an age that you think would be maybe the perfect age? Because I was thinking about this earlier today. Like, you know, you've got your, you've got your, you know, your younger years. And I have never wanted to go back and be younger again. As far as, well, I've wanted to go back and maybe relive, like if I could go back and relive this or that, you know, as your as your mind sometimes drifts off. But I've never wanted to go back to when I was a kid or a teenager. I never found those parts of my life to be, I mean, they were fun. There were some great times, but I never did feel that anything that I did in those years affected me as much as it did when I was in my 20s. Because my 20s is, you know, and I, and I kind of wrote it down, it was like the 20s is, is really where you're, you're learning. You're going out into the world more on your own. Some are moving away. 
I moved away. And I was gone the majority of my 20s. I had uh, moved away to another place. And I learned a lot through going through that process. And now looking back, it seems like those times were probably some of the best times that I had. When I was on my own, so to speak, in a different place than I was comfortable. Because not it, it, it didn't give me a chance to stay inside my shell. It didn't give me a chance not to go out and do something because I wanted to accomplish the radio show and get the radio show broadcast up, up there in the region, which I did. And it wasn't easy to do. But I was able to do that. I was able to continuously still um, work in a movie theater because I knew I want to see movies as often as I do. In addition to making some extra money, what would be a good side hustle? A good side hustle, work at a movie theater. Not only is it a relatively stress-free job, but you get the benefits of getting into the film for free. And you can usually get a courtesy cup of uh, something to drink and a courtesy popcorn as well. Typically, not always. I don't. Times have changed, so I don't know about now, but when I work there. And, and that was one of the benefits, and that's, that's kind of like what I try to do with the side hustles. But that's when going back and, and thinking about, you know, your 20s. And then a lot of, you know, you know, I did become an adult early. And I was mature in a lot of ways. But I wasn't mature in a lot of ways that I see that I wasn't until I'm now looking back. <laughs> I could hold down a job. I wasn't late. I was responsible. I did what I was supposed to. But as far as like relationships or dynamics I had with other people, I wasn't mature in that way until 30s even in, even now, to be honest with you. Because I see that's something that it's a constant growing and something that it's a never finished product. Kind of like the metaphor of the, the skin. You're always going to be able to shed these layers of skin because there's always going to be damaged layers. No matter how much, how much, uh, how many chemical peels I get, I'm still going to have damaged skin and damaged layers. And that's the same thing in trying to grow in your life. No matter how many times you continuously learn about yourself and learn about the relationships and learn about how to deal with this or deal with that, it's a never ending process. It's always something to learn upon. It's something to grow about and something to ponder and think about and reevaluate. And I think that's a lot of the times um, so far in your 40s, that is uh, a, key, a key thing. I mean, a lot of people in their 40s, they're having kids, you know, gra uh, graduate high school. They're having kids going into college, maybe even having a child, which would make them a grandparent. Some are having a kid for the first time. Some of us still do not have any kids. And it's a different dynamic for whichever part of that you are. Because regardless of what you think, you are in a part of that. It's a, it's a subculture. It's a subculture that you're put into and you may not know you're put into it. It's a little bit of a subculture when you're the mother or the father at the games cheering for your kid, cheering for your kid in, in band. It's, it's, it's different when you're cheering or going, you know, having a, a grandchild, I'm sure. It's completely different being in my position where I don't have any of that. Now, I have a sister that has two children, so I have two nieces, which I love and adore, but it's not the same as if I did. So there's little subcategories of people that I know and it's kind of a group that they're, they're, you know, not necessarily single, but some are child free. There's another group that I know where they have grandkids coming into the mix. And then there's some that are parents and having, you know, kids going to college or getting ready to graduate and going into college. So it's a different dynamic for every single one all the time. And that's constantly changing because we, as we constantly get older, Things are changing. There's, there's been more deaths of people that I've known this year 
than I think in every year that uh, that I can recall. And even people that I vaguely knew, not not even people that I, I was really extremely close with or something like that. People that I might have known in passing. And it's something really, something really to think about. And I think about that more the older that I get. <clears throat> and that could just could be just the way it is. It could be the way it is. But anyway, we're going to go on to another song tonight. It's by Peach Pit, and it's called All Righty Aphrodite. And I, I do hope that you enjoy this song. It's a song that, um, it's in a playlist of my friend and I that we share. And I was going back and looking, and that's the first song she, she put on there. So I hope you all enjoy. And that was Peach Pit with Alrighty Aphrodite on the Other People Show, 92.5 WLSD, The Vault, and AM 1220. We've had quite a few people chime in tonight that are listening online. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Sheila and Laura. It's uh, Nate, my good friend Nate, from uh, back in the day. He originally started with me, uh, speaking of the movie theater, 
He originally started with me when I uh, was doing the, the Midnight Mutants at WMMT back in the early 2000s. And I did that for a little over about eight, 18 months there, a little under two years. Then moved to D.C., worked up there at a radio station, worked at WAVA 105.1 WAVA. And that was a that was a Balt that was a DC and a Baltimore station right out of Arlington, but we we did the show uh, the um, the Midnight Mutants show. Uh, I'm trying to remember it was uh, WNRN, WNRN I think was the call letters there, and then now we're on WLSD. But it's been a it's been a great journey. It's been. Not not exactly the journey that I had hoped, to be honest, or expected. But I guess you are where you are because of the choices that you make and because that's where you're supposed to be. Correct? If I was supposed to be somewhere else, then I really wouldn't be sitting here, would I? I don't think so. Now, I'm going to start doing some yoga again. I think next week we might do some yoga in studio. So you all wear some comfortable clothing. Uh, go get you a yoga mat this week. We're going to be doing some on-air yoga next week. I don't have on. I've got on black pants right now. I, these wouldn't really classify as jeans, but I, maybe they're jeans. I don't know. They're black, and I've been wearing black lately to uh, reflect my mood. No. It's just uh, something that I think that looks good, and I've wanted to wear it lately and change things up. Like I said, there's going to be new things coming in 2024, not only to the show, but to yourself, to myself. I'm going to be a better person to do better things in all aspects that I can. Now, I do miss going to shows. I don't go to as many music shows. I, like I said, I went you know, October 4th. We missed the show, and we did, uh, well, we missed The Dark Place, but uh, went to Knoxville to watch The Wallflowers. That was that was the last show, and that was a cool show. Got to meet and hang out a little bit with uh, Jacob Dillon after the show. That was fun. Always a good time in Knoxville. Um, I really like Knoxville. It's a, it's a good city. It's a small city, but it's a good one, and I don't mind it. At all. But yeah, I, that could be a place maybe in the future to go. Knoxville. That's always fun. I've always had a good time there. But I'm going to end a little bit early tonight on the other people's show. My eyes are getting heavy. I have a long day tomorrow. And tonight when I go back, going to edit these shows... And they'll be available on all the social media pages. That's the TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Spotify. The other people show. Viewers are going up every week. Please let that trend continue. Because it does mean a lot to me. And I promise you, a lot of good things are coming that you're going to enjoy. And uh, they're starting now. So this is Bleachers. Don't take the money. On the other people's show. You all have a good night.